Isaiah 26, verse 3 says something absolutely beautiful. It says, God will keep us in perfect peace when our minds are stayed on him. Let's do that right now because we live in a world, we live in a circumstance and a situation in life that needs peace. We need to keep our mind stayed on him. Let's do that right now. Precious Heavenly Father, we believe we receive the ministry of your Holy Spirit to help us get our minds stayed on you, on your principles, on your truth. Father God, on the principles of your wisdom and on your life. We believe we receive it right now. We thank you, Father, for helping us keep our minds stayed on you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're beginning our series on relationships. Relationships. And this one in particular, this first segment is the basic laws of relationship. This is the launch of our new series, Relationships. And yes, pun intended. So why do a whole series on your relationships? Because gaining wisdom from God on your relationships and applying it properly will probably have the fastest, most profound improvement on the quality of your life starting today. That's right. How's that for results? Some of you have been praying for life-changing results immediately. So here's the course. And did you notice the little play on words? Relation ships. That's because every single relationship in your life affects your destiny. Every relationship is like a ship taking you somewhere. Some carry you forward while others pull you back. Some take you across the ocean while others pull you under the ocean, it feels like. Some are like rocket ships taking you up, up, up and away while others are rocket-propelled grenades taking you down to utter destruction. Make no mistake about it, my friend. Every relationship is taking you to your destiny. Every one. I've not suggested this before, but if you want to truly be impacted with God's wisdom on this, I would suggest listening again to this message, this series with a few trusted friends, and then going over the talking points at the end of each session. Pour a coffee, a tea, and then review each of these messages like it's a conference. Reviewing wisdom with the right people will amplify God's wisdom in your life, your home, and your situation. This is not a marriage conference. It's a relationship ships conference. If you are married, this will help your marriage plus the other 87 relationships that you have that are affecting your life and your destiny. It's the whole package relationships deal. You want answers. It's time to get serious and get off the bench, my friend. This series is activation just for you. Looking at the shoes in the box, that's just pointless, that's useless. You've got to actually put them on your feet and start walking this out. In this first session, let's let's look at together the basic laws of relationship. As I've said, your relationships each move toward a destiny. Maybe you'd like to know where you're headed right now. Well, God's laws of relationship will help reveal that for you. Society tells us that your future is determined by your education or your talent, your hard work or your good deeds and your sacrifice. While these factors do have some bearing on the future and can be good, positive investments if handled properly, they are minor, minor compared to the basic laws of relationship deciding your future. Just like there is a law of gravity with predictable outcomes, there are laws of relationship already signaling a sure prediction of your destiny. That's going on right now. Amy Poehler, you know, the famous actress and comedian, she once said this, find a group of people who challenge and inspire you, spend a lot of time with them, and it will change your life. She's right. She's right. That's correct. Based off your relationships, your future is so predictable that anyone can easily and accurately forecast the direction of your life. It's that certain. Why so absolute? Because the laws of relationship are based on God's truth, His Word. Yes, God's laws are irrefutable, absolute, foundational. Every single relationship on planet Earth is subject 
to the predictability of these laws. Yes, yours too. I know, I know. You may not like that. You may even be hoping this is optional because you're thinking of a, of the influence of one or two of those relationships right now. Oh dear. Let's get started. The true laws of relationship. What are they? How do they work? Well, here's a few highlights from God's Word that outline principles for relationships so that we can see where these ships, these vessels are headed. Remember, every relationship is going someplace, good or bad, up or down, forward or backward. One day, Jesus was asked a trick question by a lawyer wanting to discredit, trying to discredit him publicly. He had enemies. Now watch this. Jesus, being one with the laws of life, answers this guy perfectly. Matthew 22, starting at verse 36. Teacher, which kind of commandment is great and important? The principal kind in the law. Now, this is the lawyer, right, that's trying to trick Jesus with religion and political correctness. Verse 37. And Jesus replied to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, intellect. See, Jesus is saying you start with loving the author of all life. Then verse 38, this is the great, most important principle and first commandment. See, true life starts right here. Then verse 39, and a second is like it, Jesus says. You shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. Verse 40, these two commandments sum up and upon them depend all the law and the prophets. You see, the laws of relationships start right here in Jesus' summary. First, you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Not a movie industry love, but real bona fide God love. That's what the Bible calls agape kind of love. Agape is a Greek word meaning the highest form of love from Father God for humans and then the reciprocal love of humanity for God. That's agape love. Jesus calls this relationship the most important principle. Let's face it, without this relationship, this life rocket, the quality of all other human relationships is in major jeopardy because you're without the most important, Jesus calls it. Life doesn't work properly until this vertical relationship is in order. The absence of this most important relationship may already explain the pain and suffering of your human relationship troubles right now. Think of it this way. You're working at relationships with no guidance or direction from the inventor of all relationship. That's a sinking ship. Billy Graham once said this, life without God is like an unsharpened pencil. It has no point. Jesus went on to say that the vertical love between God and humanity sets the order for the second law of relationship, which is horizontal, human to human. Jesus said, you shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. That's the second law. Some people obsess over the empty, short game of selfishness. Well, it's all about me. Me first, you last. The only God in this room is me and my desires. So you just all get out of my way. You do me wrong and I'll do you wrong. But Jesus checkmates that worthless, futile thinking with the law of reciprocity. That's what the second law is. It's our second law of relationship and some call it the golden rule. It's the law of reciprocity. DMX, the famous rapper and actor, he once said this, do dirt, get dirt. So I treat people with the same respect that I want. He's working the law of reciprocity. Once again, he's talking about God's absolutes, his law of reciprocity. Do dirt, get dirt. Matthew 7, verse 12, Jesus said this, So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. He's saying, so for what you want. This law of relationship is, of course, universal, and yet many people, they're ignorant of it. Listen to a scripture that harmonizes perfectly with what Jesus just said. Galatians 6, verse 7. Do not be deceived and deluded and misled. 
God will not allow himself to be sneered at, scorned, disdained, or mocked by mere pretensions or professions or by his precepts being set aside. He inevitably deludes himself who attempts to delude God for whatever a man sows, that and that only is what he will reap. Whatever she sows, that and that only is what she will reap. You see, this is critical, vital. It punctuates what Jesus said about loving your neighbor as yourself. The law of reciprocity hints at why we even have relationships. Every person in your life is ground. They're ground for the seed that you sow. Now, you can be selfish and sow bad seed or choose to sow good seed. And what about the ground? Is all ground the same? Absolutely not. Good question. That's why we're having this series, because until you recognize the ground of a relationship, you sow seed indiscriminately, and that's why many, many people live life without a harvest. They blame God. They blame the other guy. Right seed for the right ground. So let me pause just for a minute to tip, to make sure that you understand what I just said. Because you might be asking, well, what's good seed or what's bad seed? You, you might be asking, well, what's that mean? Good ground, bad ground. Quickly, here are just a few examples. As this series progresses, we'll touch on this concept several times. But right now, let me give you just a few examples. Good seed. Good seed that you might sow in your relationship can be, can be love. Kindness, mercy, forgiveness, understanding, compassion, attention, loyalty, respect, wonderful seed. Now here's some bad seed that unfortunately is sown in relationships and it can look like this. Disloyalty, manipulation, deceit, betrayal, accusation, resentment, unforgiveness, abuse. These are all seeds and believe me, they produce a harvest in one's life like weeds gone wild. How about the concept of ground? We talked about good and bad ground. In Matthew 13, Jesus tells the parable of sowing seed onto various types of ground, which he later interprets. Jesus interprets it as the quality of a person's heart. Now listen to this. Never forget this. Relationships are access to a heart that either grows or aborts the seed sown into it. The ultimate discovery in life is good ground. We all sow, but the variable that Jesus gives us in this proverb he lays out of the seed and the sower is the ground, not the seed, the ground. That's why you never approach a potential relationship with, well, what will I get out of this? But rather, what should I invest in this ground? A critical law of relationships is this. Your seed can never improve the ground. It only proves the ground. Good ground for your life investment can be simply discovering a heart that is humble, wise, honorable, meek, willing, repentant, faithful, loyal. That's good ground. Psalm 51, verse 17, God's talking about ground, and he says this, God, you will not despise a broken and humbled heart. Talking about good ground. God discerns this as good ground. Now, bad ground, on the other hand, it's usually hard, shallow, weed-friendly. For example, proud, stubborn, self-righteous, deceitful, foolish hearts, arrogant hearts, lovers of self hearts, accusing hearts. It's not that these people are hopeless because God says he calls to the foolish to repent, but it's vital for you to discern the ground type of a heart or else you crash land the second law of relationships. If you're sowing wisdom into a fool, then you're throwing good seed onto hot July asphalt. The Bible says you will get mocked for such a futile act. And no matter how nice you are, it doesn't matter how sweet you are, it's an act of futility. We're going to work to unfold this precept throughout this series, but I want you to grab onto this right now. You must understand this. Otherwise, all the teaching in the world on relationships will not fix the mess that you're going to live in perpetually. So buckle up, get ready for your ship 
to blast off. This is absolutely life critical, destiny essential. Relationships can be both the greatest of rewards and the greatest of tragedies in life. As the great philosopher Cookie Monster once said, sometimes me think, what is friend? Then me say, friend is someone to share the last cookie with. You gotta know where to sow. <laughs> Galatians 5 verse 14, listen to this. For the whole law concerning human relationships is fulfilled in one precept. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. He's backing up on what Jesus said, right? Is this getting into your heart? God repeats over and over this rule, this law of life. But why? Why is this law of relationships so critical to all of our relationships? Well, you see, God's law is a law of multiplication. His law of relationships is a law of multiplication. Relationships have the power to multiply. That's what's built into them. All relationships have the power to multiply. Therefore, they hasten your destiny for good or bad. These ships are all going somewhere, either good or bad. Good relationships, such as a teacher-mentor relationship, it'll multiply your knowledge. Hopefully, your wisdom is being multiplied right now as we teach. How about good business partnerships? They multiply ideas and profits. How about good, honorable, civil servant relationships? They multiply strength, protection. They save lives. They prevent tragedy. Obedient, honorable children in a family, according to Ephesians 6, they multiply the love factor, the joy factor, laughter and strength in a family. How about faithful brothers and sisters in Christ? Well, they multiply the faith outcomes and they activate God's influence across the land. What about biblical marriage relationships? They multiply people on earth, of course, and the peace of God on earth in mankind. But the multiplication also cuts the other way. Sadly, bad, wrong relationships, such as an immoral teacher or an immoral authority figure, multiplies the insecurity, the confusion, the anger, the rage, the dysphoria. How about a wrong partnership with a thief? It multiplies the destruction and the hatred for your life, the book of Proverbs says. What about a wrong relationship with an angry person? The Bible says that you will learn their ways and reap their ways, and so you end up multiplying more anger. What about relationship with a fool? The Bible says it multiplies disaster and destruction in your life. That's what the book of Proverbs says. And you don't even have to be a fool and it multiplies it in your life when you walk with a fool. The principle of multiplication cuts both ways. Relationships either multiply your sorrow, pain, and loneliness, or they multiply your joy, peace, and prosperity. If you partner in business with a thief, you suffer the consequences. Here's what I've shared with couples getting married. If you take loneliness or anger into a marriage, into a relationship, it will only get multiplied because that's what relationships do. Every relationship is activation for your destiny. Everyone. In Genesis 1 verse 28, God puts a simple blessing on humanity. He says, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. It's a blessing. Then God goes further in Genesis 2 verse 18 and he says, it's not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper. Well, why would mankind need help when we already have God? Because God gave humanity the blessing power to be fruitful, to multiply, to fill the earth. What makes a blessing more beautiful? To make it mutual. A mutual advantage is synergy. Let me give you a picture of synergy. The law of synergy states that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. One of the strongest horses in the world is the Belgian draft horse. One horse can pull 8,000 pounds. Two Belgian horses in the harness who are strangers to each other can pull 20,000 to 24,000 pounds. That's three times as much as one. Two Belgian draft horses raised and trained together, get this, they can pull 30,000 to 32,000 pounds. That's almost four times as much as a single horse. 
That's a mutual advantage. That's harmony. God is the inventor of the law of synergy. It's his idea. This mutual advantage thing, it's his idea. Look at Amos 3, verse 3. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? That's for multiplied good or multiplied bad. So let me give you seven steps to activate these simple laws of relationship. Review these again and again with a few close friends. Talk them over. Here we go. Number one, love God. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. If you don't recognize the inventor of the agreement, relationships, then how will you truly be able to have appropriate human relationships? Again, it's agape love that comes from knowing Father God, the first. That kind of love is empowering. It's supernatural. Number two, love others. So number one, you love God, but then number two, love others as you love yourself. Many people hate themselves. They cut, mutilate, give themselves over to addiction, abuse, and worthless living. The key to loving others is sourcing out true love for yourself. So if number one is not in place, loving others is futile. It's carnal. It's abusive. And not all others are are the same, so loving the mailman is not equal to loving your spouse, right? You know that. Number three, do unto others. Do unto others as you'd have them do to you. Now we're getting into the sowing of seed. Now you get to think about what you want and then make it happen for others. Before you get too deep on this law though, make sure you partner it with what comes next. Assess the ground. You gotta assess the ground of a person's heart. Jesus said, you will know a person by the fruits of their life and living. Culture today wants to look the other way on a person's actions unless their actions conveniently fit their narrative for politically outrage. Bad fruit is bad fruit. Evil actions betray an evil heart, says Jesus. You're right. That's not politically correct, but it's morally sound. If you fail to recognize and assess the ground of a person's heart, you engage in evil stewardship because you're not your own. You've been bought with a price, and if you belong to God, that means you are required to sow good seed into good ground. And that leads us to number five. Look where you're going. You are right now, this moment, going someplace with your relationships. Look, consider, take a moment to glass where you're going because your relationships are already signaling a destination. Remember, it only takes one wrong or foolish relationship to sink your ship. Jesus chose Judas so that you wouldn't have to, just like he died on the cross, so you wouldn't have to do that. God's laws make this a very, very predictable thing. Talk this over with your trusted friends. And then number six, expect God. I've seen it over and over where people make great sacrifice in relationships, friendships, and even congregations only to be tragically disappointed because their relationships are all pulling on horizontal expectations. Not God expectancy, horizontal expectancy. You honor God when you put all of your trust in Him. When you sow good seed, do the right thing, act honorably. It's not because your neighbor is necessarily honorable or that your spouse spouse is perfect. It's because God is great. And when you sow the right seed, God sees and he rewards you. The worst thing we can do in our human relationships is barter with seeds. Marriage is built on bartering or set up to fail. Well, look, I did this for you. So now, so now you owe me, you got to do this for me. Do good as unto God. And with the knowledge of that, he sees and then God rewards. Yes, it honors God for you to be reward motivated as you place all of your expectations on him. He won't fail. And then lastly, number seven, repeat and practice, repeat and practice, repeat and practice. This isn't a one-time thing. You do it over and over in honor of God. Your life becomes the architectural wonder of the discipline of your repetition. If this was easy, everyone would be doing it. 
There would only be great marriages. Everyone would be the most amazing friend. Parents would be perfect. Kids would be perfect. And everyone would be honorable. Nobody would go out into eternity wishing that they had been a better friend, a, a kinder person, listened better, tried to understand more, or acted more with the love of God and forgiven people. Yeah, you need to talk this over with some of your close friends. How can you begin to repeat and practice these action steps in response to God's laws of relationship. Once again, invest some time in yourself and go over these steps. You wouldn't fly a plane without training. Why would you assume that you can handle something so much more complicated like a relationship? Consider the tragic outcomes all around you. And even history points to famous relationships sinking. It's obvious that money, fame, or beauty don't produce excellent relationships. God's the expert in the room. He set up these laws and these precepts. I understand that talk of relationships can really stir up strong feelings. Most of us know what it feels like to crash our vessel on the rocks or land our ship on the wrong planet. God never speaks to make you feel condemned, my friend. He sent Jesus to give us life and life more abundantly. God is love. He wants you encouraged today. He wants to fill you up with hope. I hope that hearing the truth about God's will for you helps you realize and understand that it's His plan for you to be blessed, which must include healthy, happy, good relationships. God wants you filled with joy and walking in peace. That's why he translates his kingdom principles for relationships so that we can be blessed. And that sets us up to be a blessing for many, many others. Right now, let's bring all of our relationships to the Lord. When Jesus was going to help the woman at the well, the first thing he said was, go get your husband. Sometimes we don't realize that most of what's out of order, painful and wrong in our lives is greatly connected to our relationships. Let's ask God for help. Heavenly Father, we ask you for help right now. Oh, we need your help. You are the expert and very person of agape love. That's pure, unfailing, creative, kind and merciful love. Your God kind of love. Lord, we bring to you all of our relationships now and ask for your help. Oh, we cry for your help your wisdom, your guidance. Thank you for your word that clearly reveals the invisible laws of relationship for us. We can work your laws and get predictable outcomes that are heaven here on earth. Give us wisdom in friendship, wisdom for family, marriage, wisdom for handling even disagreements and for pursuing peace. And Father God, this is so important. Right now, we renounce any bitterness and any unforgiveness in our lives. Just say, Lord, forgive me as I forgive others. If we are carrying any resentment toward others, we lay it down at the foot of the cross in Jesus' name. God, you've forgiven us, and so now we are empowered to forgive others. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's Word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.